This is API Case Files. Hear this message. Tune this channel. Like E.T. said. Hello there, welcome to the latest edition of API Case Files. I'm Marsha Barnhart, API Chief of Investigations and your host for this episode. API Case Files provides an opportunity to examine and discuss reports and observations of unidentified aerial phenomena and the associated interests surrounding the study of the phenomena. We like to gear our show to other investigators and investigative organizations. However, many API Case Files listeners are simply interested in our examination of UFOs and anomalous experiences and incidents. So, if that's the case with you, then this is the show for you. Hopefully, you will subscribe to our podcast and mention it to like-minded persons. Also, we would like to hear from you regarding your interests and experiences. Contact us through our website, aerial-phenomenon.org. We'd enjoy hearing from you. We have some interesting cases to present this episode, and per usual, you will be hearing first-person accounts of witnesses telling of their encounters with unidentified phenomena. We get cases from around the world. Recently, we received witness reports from New Delhi, India, Adelaide, Australia, Mickleover, Derby, UK, and Douglas on the Isle of Man. Paul Carr, API's director, is conducting the investigation of this case. Two witnesses on the Isle of Man watched three anomalous aerial objects float with apparent purpose over their office in Douglas, the capital city of the Isle of Man. This took place around 9.30 in the morning on May 27th of this year, 2021. The two office mates spotted and then got into a car and pursued these objects. Here now is Witness One's account of their sighting experience. I work in an office which overlooks other offices. I have a full view of the sky and I sometimes wonder what the sky and look up and stuff like that. And where my monitor is, my window is just above the monitor, um, and this glint just caught my eye. It was, it was like a sparkle in the sky. It was like something that you'd see straight away, and it was, it was just bizarre. It was absolutely bizarre. Um, so that caught my attention. And then, as you can see in the video, it starts off with one of one object. So I'm like, okay, this is interesting. I actually have the clip with audio but because my friend my friend refers to the local radio um, who we were going to send it to in it um, so we decided to cut the audio out um, but we're just absolutely fascinated by it so I go over to the window and the next it's just it was I've never seen anything move like it in the sky it was it was so in its own thing um, and it moved above the building and then two more came up. I think the craziest thing, Paul, was how the light glinted off it. And it was definitely, it was too high up to be anything like a bag or a balloon or anything like that. It was too high up for that. And these two other objects appeared because they were really far away, you could tell, but the perspective in the sky coming up above the building, they, they were far away coming up behind the building. and. It was just crazy to see because they were like almost, it was like a unison to them as they were moving throughout the sky. Okay. 
So can you tell me when you started taking that video and why you stopped? Um, I stopped because we decided to go and um, follow them. So we did that and we followed them for about 10 minutes. Um, we could we had eyes on all the way and um, it was a cemetery which we decided to stop at. Now we seen them just about just before we pulled into the cemetery, looked up and they were, they were there. We got out the car, parked up, looked up and they were gone. And we had eyes on for 10 minutes. So it was just absolutely crazy. And then we just went back to the office and got on with my day. And I was just, I couldn't understand that I actually seen something like that. It was very bizarre. Did you take any more video other than the one you sent, with that, sent to us? Yeah, I've got videos, but they're not really anything. They're just kind of looking up at the sky, but they were, they were right above us. Um, and then we got out and they were gone. So it was okay. literally... Yeah, well, I'd like to have that one though. Um, okay. I'll I'll send you a link to a uh, a folder there. You can upload them. Fantastic. Okay. And ideally, absolutely pristine, right out of the camera. Uh, now, the direction you were moving in was roughly roughly north, a little yeah. more, more like northwest. Northwest, so, yeah. So when you got out, they were kind of to the east. Yeah, basically. Okay. How high above the horizon? Quite high. So near, nearly overhead, or yeah, almost, yeah, and with the same glint as well. It was very bizarre. I don't know what you make of the footage, but I did play around with it a little bit. This is a a, a very preliminary first cut, so I see all three of them at that pretty quickly here. Pretty, pretty quickly, yeah, and. Uh, it does look like it's got a, a dark side and a light side, and it's rotating or moving in some way that the that side is catching the sun, the light side, and then you, it reflects it towards you. Yeah. So that's what I have. And there's a, you say there's another one, uh, but you don't see anything in the video? Correct. Yeah, that's uh, when we get out the cemetery or I'm still in the car. Now, as soon as you got out of the car, they were gone, right? Yeah. Yeah, but instantly. just before you got out of the car, you were they were visible. Yeah. Okay. Because so, that made us turn in. We were like, should we get out here and get another look? Because I was going to start videoing again, and they were gone. The reason why I found it so bizarre, Paul. Yeah. Seriously, was two days before, on one of our local news pages, there is the same object, and the news have uploaded it, but it's on its own. I seen this. I seen the same object, or three of them, two days later. It, it and it was the first thing I. Th I can't believe I haven't even told you. I'm so sorry. Um, it was the first thing I thought of was like that's the exact same thing that I seen. The person actually, uh, the description on this video actually explains it well. Like the way it moved through the sky, it was so smooth, but also it was moving at a pace that. If it was a drone, no one could have followed it because it was it was quite quick. This person describes, or the the description is, it moved fairly quickly in a purposeful position around the coast and then out of sight. It is a very small on camera, but looked to be about two foot long, and glinted like metal or silver in the sun as it turned. It looked to be smooth and all in one piece. There were no propellers or other gadget elements you may see on a drone. It was flying independently, no strings or attachments, not, and nobody followed it on the ground. They couldn't at the speed it was traveling. So this was uploaded the day before me, on the 26th of May, and the 27th. So it was the day after, and I see the exact same object, but three of them. And it's not, it's not that far away. I'll be honest, mate. I've never seen anything like it. It's. I think the thing that got me more than anything was the way they moved through the sky. There was there was such a fluency to it, and I understand that you can get things like drones and stuff, but it never even crossed my mind that it could be a drone. And the more I looked at it, the more I didn't know what it was. I, and I've never really seen that before. This is API case files. Case files. As I mentioned, Paul is currently investigating this case, number 21-023.
The video recorded by the witness can be accessed on our show notes page. The next case we'll spotlight took place in a busy section of Brooklyn, New York, called Williamsburg. It was May 25, 2021, at 11.10 p.m. The witness had just finished shopping at a neighborhood store and stepped out onto the crosswalk to head home. He happened to catch lights out of the corner of his eyes, up in the air over the East River, by his estimation. There were three lights traveling together and silently moving towards the island of Manhattan. Astonished, he quickly thought to pull out his phone, position himself in a steady stance, and shoot two short clips of video. The first clip was the most notable. It was 23 seconds long. He caught an almost classic formation of three seemingly self-illuminated orbs moving as if they were a single connected unit in a triangular formation. It wasn't his first sighting, but perhaps his most shocking in that it was right out there for all to see if they had only looked up. Uh, it's about 11 o'clock, 10 past 11. I'd just gone to the supermarket to pick up a late night snack, walked out, um, and this is around the corner from my house in uh, Williamsburg in Brooklyn. And as I was waiting at the zebra crossing, uh, I looked to my right and I saw three orange lights low in the sky in a triangular formation. And instantly it struck me as something that was different. You know, I see planes and helicopters all the time because of the airports in in New York, but this was something different. So I instantly pulled out my phone and started recording them. And you know, I was really sure to keep my arms still because I know that good footage is everything and it helps people identify, or maybe identify what it could be. Um, so these orange lights were just flying in a triangular formation, um, just gliding across the sky really low. Um, there was no noise from them. There was lots of noise from the traffic. Traffic was busy that night. Um, and they just glided across, coming from south to north, um, kind of looking towards uh, the East River, around that way, um, from where I was in Brooklyn. I managed to zoom in and, and it, you know, look like these things were in formation. And at first, you know, my instinct was that it's three separate crafts. Now, these lights weren't blinking. They were just a steady orange glow, just gliding. That's the only way I can describe it. Um, and then eventually it disappeared behind a building from my vantage point. It kind of went behind me, so I crossed over the road and uh, sort of filmed again from another angle. And there was a guy in the street. He said, are you watching this? You know, what the hell is that? I said, I know, I'm filming it. And I filmed it for about 10 more seconds. And then it kind of disappeared behind the building again, you know, from, from where I was looking at. So I ran down to the edge of the street. It took me about 10 seconds and looked. And where I looked should have been a clear view of what it was, but it wasn't there anymore. And whether it had gone under cloud cover or simply just disappeared, I don't know. But I couldn't see it, and I was a bit perplexed because I thought, well, it technically should still be there at the speed it was moving and what have you. Um, but it hadn't it had just gone. So I was sure that what I was seeing was something unusual and not different. You know, we used to see in planes and whatnot from JFK and LaGuardia coming into land and going overhead. Uh, but this was something a bit different. And it was only when I uploaded it onto the internet and got people's thoughts and comments that a lot of people seemed to say it was one large craft, like a triangular craft. Um, and I'm looking back at the footage and watching it a few times. I'm, I'm more of the notion that that might have been what it was um now there's a lot of people saying it was chinese lanterns because of you know they were gliding and they were an orange glow uh which i wouldn't rule out however um the fact that they kept this triangular formation is what initially struck me as unusual so it wasn't a plane it wasn't a helicopter so it was definitely something different i mean i you know, I, live, I lived in Syria two and a half years now, and nothing has made me stop and record anything in the sky.
This witness also made a report to MUFON. He said they investigated his sighting and concluded it was most probably sky lanterns due to the orange color of the lights. Now, yes, these could have been lanterns. However, I found no evidence of that in my research, and in fact, what I found is that sky lanterns are in violation of the fire code of New York State. They're illegal statewide. But also, the movement of the lights and their cohesive nature makes me suspicious of a sky lantern finding. Could they have been drones flying in formation? Again, no evidence of that. It's illegal to fly a drone in New York City, let alone a trio of drones. The area is Class B airspace, and one needs FAA permission. There are a lot of restrictions for flying over the East River and much of Manhattan, too. I mean, it's possible some drone geek intent on breaking the law managed to fly three drones that night in a well-maintained triangular formation. But these objects did not have drone lighting configurations. Frankly, at this point, his footage looks a lot like many other instances of silent running, self-illuminated triangular light formations that have been seen, reported, and captured on video worldwide. I'm still researching and investigating this sighting. Now, my witness interviews often include an examination of the totality of a person's experience. When questioning someone, I like to know if they've had other anomalous experiences or if there is a family history of anomalous experiences. This line of inquiry during an investigation can sometimes be quite illuminating. Now, did you have any um, any strange thoughts uh, or or dreams or or feelings prior to or just after this experience? Yes, the night before, and I haven't told anyone this, but the night before, I dreamt I was conversing with a grey alien and I, was, I don't know what the conversation was about but I remember talking to it and it was really ugly really ugly but friendly well, I wasn't frightened of it I just remember thinking it was ugly and talking to it I don't know what was said and that was, that was literally the night before um, so it was strange that, that happened the night after Have you had such a dream before? Have you talked to aliens in your dreams before? No, never Uh-huh did you find any strange marks on your body or have any um, pff, missing time or anything of that nature? No. Uh-huh, okay. I did actually photograph another craft uh, about eight years ago. I was in the Turks and Caicos Islands, North Caicos, and um, me and my sister and her husband were watching something just dance around the sky. A little star, the lowest one in the sky, was just dancing around. And we watched it for about half an hour, filmed it on a Canon camera and took some photos and later on when we uploaded the photos to the computer and zoomed in, you know, we have a picture of like a a craft, a, a saucer. It was like, shaped like a 50 pence piece, you know, an English 50 pence piece, like hexagonal. And it's a quite, quite compelling picture. The, the, the only thing I will say is that when I first saw uh, the craft in Turks and Caicos about eight years ago, what I was telling you about, that night, I was in my own cabin, which was kind of next to where my sister was. And it was after we saw what baby was in the sky. All of a sudden, the whole room was humming, like an electrical vibration, which I couldn't work out where it came from. Um, very strange, almost like a, like, a, like a lamp was about to go out. It was about to blow up. And I got up off my bed because it felt as if the bed was vibrating and humming and opened the wardrobes and this kind of vibration humming was coming from there but it was also coming from everywhere i went into the bathroom everything was vibrating and humming and laid on the mattress it felt as if that was vibrating and humming i went on for about five minutes um very very strange i never felt anything like before um eventually it stopped and then i would say two years ago I was out in the Hamptons in Sack Harbour uh, in the summer. I was living out there, and then I had the same sensation, shall we say, happen again. And um, it lasted for about three minutes, and I thought, okay, it sounds like the air conditioning is going to blow up. I 
gone off and switched it off, put the lights on, and the same thing was happening. It was this vibration was happening all through the little cabin where I was in, and um, the only way I can describe it was like an electrical humming. It was coming from everywhere. It was, you know, it was in the air. It was in the furniture. It was in my ears. It was just a strange sensation. Didn't didn't hurt. It was just mildly uncomfortable. Yeah. So that that was a few years ago. And obviously, the, you know, the thing I saw a couple of weeks ago. Nothing unusual afterwards. But like I say, the night before, I did have that dream, which was. Uh, Strange, I only remembered it, you know, part of the day after. You know, obviously, I'm a believer in extraterrestrial things and all that kind of stuff, and you and you want it to be that, but you know, I'm not, I'm not someone that's going to say, yeah, this is definitely it. I'm saying whatever I saw was definitely anything. I'm, I'm just saying, well, it was unusual enough for me to, you know, to poke my interest and uh, for me to pick up my camera. The footage from this case, 21023 Brooklyn, New York, May 25th, 2021, can also be found on our show notes page. The third and final case we're covering on this episode of API Case Files took place on May 15th, 2021, just about 40 minutes after midnight. I mentioned this case briefly on our last podcast. It was notable in that a case Paul was currently working included the sighting of a large, neon green, oblong-shaped craft that was sighted just two days before. My case, 21018, was near the central Ohio town of Cambridge. It was a two-witness sighting of a large, fast-moving, neon-green, oblong UFO maneuvering in a way that seemed incomprehensible to the witnesses. It was seen less than 500 feet away, at treetop level, right in front of the witnesses' car windshield, so it's classified as a close encounter. Witness 1, the mother, and her son, Witness 2, were driving home just past midnight after picking up the son from his late night shift. What happened next so ripped their mental fabric of normalcy that their lives will probably never be the same. And it's five miles through a lot of country roads without, uh, and there were no cars, nothing. Um, I was going kind of fast. My son was with me. Um, we pulled up to turn into our driveway. I put the blinker on. Then something shot over our car, took a sharp left, and then another sharper left and went up in the sky and disappeared. It was bright, bright, bright green. There was no sound. And it was terrifying. <laughs> and and I wish I had more, but it was so fast. Everything happened so fast that details, I know, we know it was big. Uh-huh. It was big enough to block out the trees that, that were on the side. And that, that's how low it was. It could have been like a long triangle, but it was too fast. But it it scared us. It made us sick to our stomach, uh, chest pain for probably an hour, and uh, beep. Yeah, we just uh, we couldn't believe what we saw. It was unbelievable. I've seen things in the sky. I've seen meteors. It it, it was nothing like that. It it was just it buzzed us pretty much. Is that is what I think? It it buzzed the car when we stopped. It startled it because I'd been going fast. And I pretty much stopped pretty fast. And it's like it started it. And that's when I had to hurry up and bank left and go up and out of my sight. I mean, it disappeared in an instant. Just boom. You no, know, nothing in the rear view mirror. Just it was it whooshed over. us. I saw it in front of me. I lifted my arm up. And when it banked and it, it just it disappeared. 
Now, how far in front of you did it go before it disappeared? Did it get to the, you know, just just a couple car lengths away, or was it well down the road before you turned that corner there? It it takes a little little left around the corner. How far? Oh no no. Nope. It didn't go down fast. Like it, it to us, it, we started it by stopping, and it just went right a little over before it banked up. Mm-hmm. So I'm still trying to get an idea of how far it was past you before it hooked its left and did its its thing. You know, was it like three car lengths past you and then reek or what? A car length. A car length. <laughs> God one, almighty. One. Yes, just right there. It was just right there. Could a drone take a turn like what you witnessed? No, not, I don't know. Uh-uh. Not so fast and not. No, it's like it went back the way it came, but it disappeared. Uh huh. Uh huh. Short left. Okay. Went another left. Kept. We looked. I mean, so startled, and it's gone. Just completely gone. Nothing. So you think it was kind of cigar shaped, maybe oval on both ends. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, it, it, and it, it's hard because it was so fast. It it went. It happened so fast. And even people are like, "Oh, you don't have any details." Right. But it was green. Very, very, very green. Yes, yes. I'd say with some red, but I don't know. Well, um, so that made you physically ill from because of the fear of it? It so overcame your senses? Or do you think there was some association with that object that um, projected something onto you? Or, or it had something come out of it that made you physically ill? What's your thoughts there? No. For me, it was just the the emotional of seeing something that sh- is unreal that shouldn't have been there. Uh-huh. To me, that's what it was because I almost, I felt I had like, you know how you have a cry that wants to come. Uh-huh. I felt like that for about 20 minutes too. So for me, it's more emotional, kind of sick because what the hell is that? Uh-huh. And yeah, I don't think it did anything to us. I, yeah. It was just emotionally overwhelming is what you're saying. Right. Right. You were psychologically undone by the experience. Exactly. Now, this thing was, do you know how how far 500 feet is, approximately? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Was this thing 500 feet or less from you? Less. 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 All right. It was close, yeah. Just over the treetops? Just before the tree, in front of the treetops. We didn't, I couldn't see the trees. And then it went up and over. Oh, I see. No. I went, actually went out and looked. Okay, so you think it was tree level before it just pulled up and turned and was gone? Top of the tree level, yeah. You know, like trees are only about 60 feet tall. Yeah. You have a close encounter because it's 500 yeah. feet or less. Wow. All right, so that uh, that's interesting. All right, well, is there anything else you can think of to add? You know, I, I wish I, I could, but it, like I said, it happened so fast. So startling. I just wish I could remember more, but it was just too fast. So fast. Again, this case in Ohio occurred May 15, 2021, two days after a Colorado witness saw a neon green cigar shaped craft. I tried on several occasions to nail down a telephonic interview with Witness 2 but he was so traumatized by what occurred that he just could not manage the discussion. His mother, of course, was understandably disturbed. How do you explain such a thing to yourself, let alone a vulnerable son? But in my comprehensive telephonic interview, I asked if there were any other occasions of anomalous experiences in her past. The mother said yes, as a matter of fact, there was. And she, with trepidation, began to unravel a history of strange experiences that started early in her childhood. We lived on the farm, um, pretty much country. Um, I was on the second floor in my bedroom, and I was just a little kid, and I loved to have my windows open in the summer, curtains open, feel free. I remember waking up, and there was something covering with something, man, I don't know. You know, I was just a little kid looking into the window. And I was, I remember being absolutely terrified. And I rolled over and I, I was, 
so little, but I remembered if I just do the regular breathing, like when you're sleeping, they'll go away and they won't know that I saw them. And I did that for, I don't know how long. And finally turned over and there was nothing there. And I went down and my mom, before she passed, we talked about it. She goes, she remembers I was just terrified. I ran down and told her. And to this day, I don't have windows open and I, I, or curtains. I, I can't. And I mean, that's 54 years ago. But everywhere I live, I cannot have curtains open at night. Mm-mm. Now, what so time? Knows. And I did go to research it later to see if there was anything else. That happened around that time, like 1968. Oh, yeah. 1967. Oh. And there was, there was a lady had a sighting that they were driving on the interstate, coming home, and right nearby area, they saw a UFO. So for me, it's like, well, you know, maybe, I don't know. In 1967 and 1968, there was huge UFO reports all over the United States. Wow. Tell me this now. You were you were just a small girl and this you were on the second floor and this thing was hovering and looking in a window at you. Is that what you're saying? Right. And what did it the, look like? They were inside something. Oh, oh it, it was in a craft? To me I'm almost saying an oval like an oval oval type uh-huh, type uh-huh. of ship. Uh-huh. And, you know it it's, it's hard. I know it was something looking at me. I don't know if it was a man. I don't know. I don't know. I know it was terrifying. So now, then you had this experience when you were out six years old, and that was like 67, 68. And did you have anything prior to that or after that that you can recall? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, let's keep hearing it yes. because this is Actually, not unusual. I do. Okay. I know, you know, if people think you're crazy, I don't talk about too much. I, I All don't. right, but my husband, we dated since we were 16. Uh-huh. So we were out parking uh-huh. near the farm on a little dirt thing, you know, we were, mm-hmm. we were making out, whatever. And I looked up at this guy, now I remember this, and I pointed and I said, What's that? And I remember saying it was a weird thing. The next thing I know, we both woke up. I don't, I don't even, we were. A, wake and then we we woke up it was bizarre i'm like what happened i don't know i said well i don't even remember falling you know getting tired yeah so that's one other weird thing we've had well, how long were you out of it and what time frame was that tell me the year of that the best you can recall 60 70, like 77 uh-huh like 1977 okay. yeah um and it i remember it was a we had a curfew, had to get home by midnight. So it was, we probably got there around 11.30 p.m., but we woke up, and it was like 20 after 12. Okay, so you experienced missing time. And, uh-huh. Now, anything else? Yeah. Um, my husband was in the Air Force, and we were stationed in Montana in the middle of nowhere where there was a lot of interesting things. Okay. Uh, well, they were seen hovering over our Air Force site. There was a lot of... Uh, unexplained sightings. I didn't. Uh, one time my husband was inside the office. We had a little uh, recreation area office thing for them and somebody had to man it, uh-huh. you know, day and night. And there was a unidentified object. They had a big to do that was hovering over the site and nobody knows what it was or knew what it was. But that what, was one thing. What time frame I don't know. That? I've always had a creepy feeling. I, I always feel like they they they've been with me a long time. Right, right. Now, what time frame was this sighting over the training site? What time frame was that? Um, let's see. Like 84? It, no, no. No, more like 1985, 86. Okay. Where was this in Montana? Okay. 30 miles north of Haver, Montana. Um, it's like 10 miles from the Canadian border, but it was on top of a plateau. Okay. It was called the Haver Air Force site, but I don't, you know, it's it's gone now. Okay. Now, uh, what else? What other things did you have? <laughs> I, okay, I never talked about these things to my kids when they were little. Uh-huh. But my youngest, who was with me when we saw this, would always, and we have some pictures, would draw pictures of aliens, aliens coming into my room, aliens doing this. And <laughs> 
it was just so bizarre. And uh, yeah, that's one other strange thing. We never talked about it. Yeah, I never did it. I was like, where did that come from? This Ohio case, number 21018, that took place May 15, 2021, was closed as unidentified. It isn't that unusual to learn of multiple anomalous experiences from people who report UFO sightings. Back in the day, investigators did not delve into or concern themselves with witness information other than the specific sighting that prompted a report. But along the way, investigators began to note that some people reported a list of strange experiences that occurred before or after a sighting. Early on, witnesses were considered less reliable or prone to fabrication or fantasizing or lying for attention when they admitted to a string of weird things or a family history of odd happenings. As a result, this type of information was discounted and left out of reports. But I believe this information is very important to gather and relate. I feel it helps paint a better picture of the range of phenomena humans are experiencing. As odd and weird and woo-woo as it seems, it just might be key input in the long run. Leaving it out of the equation is just cherry-picking data, in my opinion, which is counterproductive at best and derelict at worst. Granted, we know there is a lot of noise out there hiding in the signal. We know the vast majority of cases investigated usually have a reasonable explanation, But there are some very good cases that can't be discounted. There are some people who have had genuine anomalous experiences. People who have had genuine anomalous experiences offer pieces of a puzzle. No one knows how many parts there are to this puzzle. No one knows what picture will form once or if all the puzzle pieces are eventually put together. But it's the gathering of these disparate pieces that enable investigators to ask better questions, form better approaches, and possibly get closer to some rudimentary understanding of what the phenomena actually is and how it's connected, if at all, to humankind. Meanwhile, we investigators have plenty of work to do, and as far as I can tell, There is no end in sight. And that's a wrap for this episode of API Case Files. I've been your host, Marsha Barnhart, and I was joined by my colleague, API Director Paul Carr. Visit our website at aerialphenomenon.org. Here you can find out more about our organization. You can make a UFO report at this site. Just fill out the form provided as completely as you can, and that will generate a report. You can also make a UFO report to us at www.reportaufo.org. This podcast is a production of Aerial Phenomenon Investigations. Links for case file information and to view the videos connected to the cases covered are in the show notes for this episode and can be found at apicasefiles.com. The spoken content of API Case Files is distributed under the Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 4.0 license. All music heard on this podcast is licensed under Creative Commons. This free use with attribution music is deeply appreciated, and we thank the musicians and songwriters for sharing their creative spirit.
Featured during this episode was music by Pinky, Z Ark, and Alien Chronicler. Our intro theme music is a mashup of Alien Chronicler and Box Cat Games, and DJ Spooky provides our outro theme music. Meanwhile, thanks for joining us, and we hope you recommend API case files and API conversations to your friends and acquaintances. This is API case files, case files, case files.